Hello again, ladies and gentlemen, I'm Joe Handy, the Android Authority App Guy, and today we're going to take a look at the 2021 version of Samsung Goodlock. First, let's talk briefly about the UI changes from last year. Most of the Goodlock UI is the same from what it was last year, and the various modules are still laid out mostly the same way. However, that isn't to say that everything is the same. This year's UI is a lot more colorful and animated. Each module has a little graphic that plays on repeat that gives you a small idea of what each one does. Additionally, the graphics only play if the module is downloaded, so you can quickly see whether or not you actually have the module. There are 13 total modules, and we'll briefly go through each one and spend about 30 seconds showing you how each one works and what the UI looks like. You can download all 13 modules in the Samsung Galaxy Store, and there are easy shortcuts that take you there straight from Goodlock, so you don't have to go fishing around if you don't want to. One last thing before we get started. This was a leaked APK, so the 2021 version is not fully available in the Galaxy Store as of the making of this video. The download link in the video description goes to APK Mirror for a third-party install if you want to. It might change between now and when it officially launches, and it also may not be available in all regions. Lockstar is a good lock module that lets you change up your lock screen. The top is a what you see is what you get editor, and the bottom options let you adjust the looks to your taste. In the actual editor, you can tap and move elements around to look how you want. You can also add new elements like shortcuts along the bottom of the screen. I'm a big fan of the panda clock myself. You can disable it any time by simply turning it off. Quickstar lets you make adjustments to your quick settings and status bar. This one is a bit confusing at first, but you learn pretty quick once you start making your way around. I love this one because I can remove the omnipresent alarm icon since I have an alarm set for basically every day and I don't need it in the status bar. The other really neat feature lets you decide if you want to open just the notification shade or the whole quick settings panel. Simply set the slider and then swiping down from the left of the dot lets you open just the notifications and anywhere on the right opens the whole quick settings panel. You do have to swipe down from the top still, but it is pretty easy to follow. There aren't a ton of options overall, so this one is pretty easy to learn. Clock Face is a pretty easy one, so it won't take very long. Clock Face lets you lightly customize your always on display clock face as well as your lock screen clock face. There are a couple of dozen options ranging from digital to analog clocks and ones with text as well. Some of the faces have further customization elements like color and formatting. This one is pretty easy, just pick the one you like, customize it if you want to, and that's about it. Oh, and uh, make sure you remember to actually set the clock because otherwise it won't show up as expected. Multi Star is where we start getting into the power user stuff. This lets you tweak the experience for multi-window mode along with Samsung's pop-out feature. You can do things like force the phone to enable multi-window for all of the apps, hide the status bar and navigation bars while using multi-window for a more immersive experience, and it adds shortcuts to make pop-up view happen faster. Some of the options may require a reset though, so prepare yourself for that. Navstar deals mostly with how you navigate around your phone. You can lightly customize both the swipe gestures and the three button navbar layout depending on which one you use. For the three button navbar, there are a variety of skins to make your buttons more interesting, and additionally, you can add a button to manually hide the navigation bar whenever you want. You can lightly configure the background color too if you want to. The swipe gesture side has a few options as well. You can change things like the left and right back gestures independently and change the color of the gesture handle on the bottom of the screen. Honestly, I was hoping for a bit more customization for the swipe gestures, but it is what it is. Home Up lets you lightly customize the stock Samsung launcher. You can change things like grid size, the app drawer grid size, and even control the background blur when opening the app drawer. There is also a setting to customize how folders work on your home screen, as well as a backup function so you don't lose your layout once you're done. But by far my favorite part is the Share Manager. This lets you lightly edit and customize the Share menu. This is awesome because you can literally have it only show the apps you want, and it helps dramatically shorten the list only to the apps you actually use. You can also disable nearby sharing if you don't use it to save yourself some more room on the UI. NotiStar is a separate notification area that shows your notification history in its own UI. It's available directly from GoodLock or from the lock screen if you prefer. It's a nifty tool because you can go back and check old notifications again if you dismiss them from the normal notification shade. This one is mostly unnecessary since Android 11 allows this functionality by default. However, there are some niche use cases where NotiStar is still pretty useful. 
Keys Cafe lets you adjust and customize your Samsung keyboard. You can switch it from the simple QWERTY style to Dvorak or Colmac if you want to, and even change the symbols keyboard to show different symbols. You can also play keyboard games to help your proficiency with a software keyboard by typing practice sentences and playing a little mini game. However, by far the coolest part of this one is the customization. You can custom create your own theme from scratch and enable a hilariously satisfying keyboard effect that floods your keyboard with color. I don't know how this part wasn't made part of the app natively, but it's available here and I love it. Pentastic is a good luck module for the S Pen and for devices with S Pen support. This one isn't overly complicated. You can simplify the air command menu, make your S Pen cursor an arrow or a heart, change the sound it makes to another option, and it adds a new shortcut. You can configure the shortcut to open any application or S Pen feature that you want. Obviously, this one isn't overly useful unless you have an S Pen. Wonderland lets you make a live wallpaper or choose run from a list of preset options. You basically select a base image and then add stuff over top. You can add things like particle effects, text, other images, movement effects, and some other basic stuff. This one doesn't have a steep learning curve, but it does take a minute to make everything and explore all of the options. You can also check out the existing presets for some ideas on how everything works. Theme Park is by far the most complex module in Good Luck. You basically get to make your own theme from scratch. It starts by making you choose a wallpaper. From there, you get to go to each themable part of the UI in its own window and customize your theme further. This one has a steeper learning curve than the others. It also lets you choose things like lighter dark mode colors and some other options. This one takes a while, but it saves your progress so you don't have to do it all at once, and the results can be really cool if you stick with it. Nice Catch is one of my favorite modules when it comes to functionality. The module basically remembers all the times your phone goes off for whatever reason. It keeps track of every vibration, toast message, screen wake, and settings change that your phone goes through. You then select the category and it lists all the applications that caused any of those things to occur. Thus, you can see if an app changed a setting or where that mysterious toast message came from. If you get no other modules in good luck, get this one. Trust me. One-Handed Operation Plus is basically an experimental gesture control system that uses the sides of your screen instead of the bottom. You pull away from the side and see an arrow that points out. You then drag it up until the arrow points up or down until the arrow points down. Each of those three arrows is customizable to do things like trigger the back key, recent apps, home, or several other options. There are handles on both sides so you can map up to six actions. I'm relying a bit on the YouTube B-roll to show some of this because it's kind of hard to explain. Most of the rest of the options let you customize these six actions as well as the handles that they come from. Edge Touch is a niche module that lets you define edge zones on your phone that lay dormant so you don't accidentally tap the screen. The process of defining an edge zone isn't overly complicated if you decide to go with a custom version. You can actually see how Samsung does it natively and then you can customize it if you need more or less space. This module only does the one thing and that's help you configure the function that prevents unintended screen taps along the edges of the screen. Like I said, pretty niche. Sound Assistant lets you customize some of the media and volume options on your phone. It does simple things like theme the volume panel and then also complicated things like helping you sync your Bluetooth sound for your videos if your Bluetooth headphones are out of sync. There are way too many options to talk about them individually, but I did particularly like the ability to enable or prevent apps from making sounds over top of other apps. Honestly, unless you want to theme your volume panel or you're having an issue with your sound, you probably won't use Sound Assistant very often. Keep in mind that I'm going through each and every module regardless of whether or not they were updated to their 2021 counterparts. This was just what was available when I installed the app earlier this week and I wanted to show everybody what good luck was packing. I would expect some of these modules to get further updates as the year progresses. Still, every year when I write the article for the website, I always forget how awesome Goodlock is and how much extra it brings to the table. If you want my opinion on all of this, it should come as a stock app on all Samsung devices, and all Samsung owners should browse through it at least once. And that about does it for this one, folks. If you like this video, you know what to do, and if not, you still know what to do. There is a written version in the video description if you want to read more. And as always, thanks for watching, everybody, and have a wonderful day.